Welcome everybody uh, for this cosplaying of Lili van der Stokker, an artist who, and to quote Lili van der Stokker, uh, since the 80s has been making difficult art that looks easy, colorful drawings and murals, a work of art that speak directly to the viewer and take the position of woman or their own creation as a subject. With sentences like, quote, uh, calm down, don't worry, everything will be all right, unquote, or, uh, quote, cheap artworks, easy to understand, we also sell socks, unquote. In colorful clouds with colored paper like flowers, she seduces the viewer while the text is sharp and makes one think, what will be all right? And should the artist make easy, manageable art? There are direct works in which she takes radical position, questioning or discussing the art world and her position as a female in that world. The works, which look sweet and silly, turn out to be a layered whole with references to art history and reflections on ethics and aesthetics. By giving it a closer look, it turned out that nothing is nice, sweet and beautiful. Although maybe colorful on the surface, behind it lays a complex world that isn't always that nice or so easy to understand. The work of Lili van der Stokker is appreciated internationally uh, and her work has been exhibited, for example, at the Centre, the Centre Pompidou in Paris, Tate Modern in London, the New Museum in New York, uh, Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, and recently in the Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, just to name a few. Um, so without any doubt, we are very pleased and honored to have Lily uh, as our guest here tonight. And the exhibitions I just mentioned, um, which you probably have missed, um, if you really want to see her work re uh, now, you can just go to 019, where she made a billboard for Art Leads, and that's on view uh, at the moment. So maybe you also saw her uh, work there. So Lily, welcome. Um, I'm happy and, and honored to have you here. Uh, we hope to have a physical lecture when we were planning this. Sadly, it's still uh, online, but um, yeah, please. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there I am. Thank you. <laughs> yes. What did you say? You said sweet and silly. <laughs> uh, sweet and silly. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, maybe I'll ask you a question back later on. <laughs> okay. Please do. Sweet and silly. Okay. Um, so uh, should I now what the share screen or or yeah. maybe I can talk first a little bit? Yeah, whatever you want, you can talk yeah. now. And I'm people sure. are connecting still or are all connected? Connect yeah, they are connected. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, it's a bit strange to do a video lecture because it's like I'm sitting in my studio talking to myself. But uh, I just, and I cannot see if anybody is bored or walk away, so, damn. <laughs> but, um, now yeah, so uh, go there, so should I, so first, do I have my, will my head be, is the, my, my, uh, my face is now big or small or? No, it's big, I think. Oh, it's big. Yeah, so I quickly before I start showing the images is uh, yeah, first I want to say this is my is uh, one of my studios. I have one in Amsterdam and this is in Bildhoven near Utrecht. It's a yeah, country house <laughs> and a uh, you know, uh, nice garden. It's not a big studio, but uh, it's a really nice place. And uh, so I'm sitting here in my house in my studio and um, 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 I was going to say, yeah, I, I chose uh, sort of 40 images. Uh, I have some text also that I will read, and I know reading is less nicer than talk, but uh, I have been starting to, um, this winter, I started to write about my own older work, my older drawings, uh, and maybe because Corona and other reasons, but I started to dig into my archive of drawings in my studio in Amsterdam, because I have a lot of drawings are sold or borrowed to people. And, uh, but I still have like a lot of old drawings and I started to write about uh, the content, maybe because I s people write about your work, 
and I'm not always agreeing with it. So, uh, and I like writing. So I started to write uh, some texts and I will read some of them to you. They're not very long. And uh, so, um, so I will uh, switch between uh, talking and reading. And I will show you, I will, it's what I will show is, um, now I just start, I show the first image. If I go share screen, oops. Uh, okay, I know. Oh, there we are. The first image, but this um, first again about uh, the, the total of the, of the lecture. I will, after this, a few images from the past, everything will be more or less chronological and it will be about my whole life as an artist. I, I did think, well, why am I always doing this? You know, I, I seem to want to explain my whole artist uh, history and oh yeah, I'm doing it again tonight. Um, but I said, I have uh, selected it very uh, in a tough way. So you will see bits from here and there. And I'm going to my latest show that I did last year in New York. Um, um, yeah, and so, here I begin with an image. This is my first wall painting in, uh, in Breda after I, I finished my art school. And um, um, yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it. It's, uh, uh, it's not existing anymore, but uh, it was my first connection with this type of work. And I guess this is where it somehow started. Okay, the next one. Oh yeah, this uh, this wall painting that we just saw uh, was in eighty three, I think, or eighty two. In eighty three, I went uh, to New York with my backpack, and um, I started to organize a gallery, uh, an artist gallery. It was in the Lower East Side in New York, and um, was kind of very, um, how say it, uh, rough. Uh, exciting uh, period and I was kind of young woman so it was quite a big deal and I'm standing here next to next to Ruth Fuglistaler a uh, Swiss artist who was singing with Meredith Monk and, um, and she was doing a beautiful performance in my gallery with a mattress and what I can say now that also this year I started to write about my early years in New York and is going to publish hopefully next year. It's sort of, I, I wouldn't say memoirs, but <laughs> it, it, it is, uh, it is uh, I'm writing about how I went to New York and who I met and the crazy times I had there. And then how I slowly, how I met my partner, Jack, and how I later met my gallerist, Hudson, who showed my work from uh, the early nineties and now my, uh, career as an artist started. So this is going to be a book later on. And here you see me and Jack standing in front of the gallery. This I think is 1985 in the gallery in the Sixth uh, Street, Lower East Side. And um, and this is that we close the gallery. Yeah, I'm show I wanted to show this and uh, because later I make art about Jack as well. And Jack passed away in uh, 2013, so. Um, okay, next. Yeah, then um, the next few, few images I'm showing you are uh, smaller works from uh, my older work that is, um, that was kind of uh, important in the beginning of my career and that were turning points in my thinking and and then later and I think and they I said and they determined because the the road of my art making. Here you see a little painting um, with Hoy 1989. I made I made a little series of those. And this work is important uh, because here, in a way, I'm saying hello to the viewer. And, and in a way, it's also a date painting because I dated it in the front of the painting. And the saying hello to the viewer, my desire to communicate is something that you see 
later on in all my works because the text that I'm using in my art is uh, in a way for me to communicate with the viewer and also the artworks are almost uh, uh, alive. They are as if they, it is as if they can talk. And um, so that is a very interesting aspect. And it's also a really a natural desire of me as a person that with my art, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to the viewer. And so when I make it, I already um, have fun with myself thinking, oh, I'm saying this and this will, people will uh, interpret it in a certain way. So I'm playing with that. Then another old drawing from also, I think uh, must be from 1990 or 1989. Um, you see me using, I'm, I'm drawing uh, sort of nothingy doodles um, and clouds. I was very aware then that I was working on a rectangle and the rectangle was in the beginning abstract with no meaning on it. So the abstraction of it, I just want to emphasize. Uh, emphasize. Um, um, and also I was very fascinated with the fact that this nothing feeling that I really liked. Uh, it's not that I was making monochromes, but I was close to that. Um, and then I found out that putting text in it, I could uh, transform meaning in a very fast way. And here, the text for new in the behoudendheid, um, and, and even with my name in the piece itself. Um, and, and I wrote down innovative conservatism. At that time, I was already, I was reading about movements in the world and in the art world. And, um, and I had this sense that I thought I want to go forward, but maybe I don't want to go forward. Maybe I want to go a little, not so up. I want to maybe go a little horizontal. I want to maybe, maybe I want to go a little slower. So I was um, thinking of this, uh, of uh, how can I be modern and not be so modern? Because modernism then, was being questioned uh, in uh, the way as we knew it then, you know, because I couldn't uh, connect to all those uh, futuristic uh, positive movements um, from just before, like minimalism and abstract expressionism. And, and um, so anyway, so this was something I was thinking of a lot. And then here, this drawing, it says, it's again, uh, I fill up the paper with nothingy doodles and a nothingy frame because that those are the basics of an artwork. You have a rectangle, you have a surface, you have a signature. And, um, and in this case, I sign it with the year made, but that's not true. It is not made in 1993. It is made in 1989. And so this work, um, um, and I wrote a text about in here. I'm starting to read my text. Uh, the text is from 1989. Um, in 1989, when I showed this drawing to Hudson, my gallerist in New York, he said with a quirky smile, 1993 forever. I was ahead of my time. I was cheating the date and I liked faking. I liked not telling the truth and I knew I could cheat and lie. That was an artist freedom I discovered and liked a lot. Reality, universal truths or whatever. What is your task aim as an artist? We can fake and lie into the extreme and that could get quite interesting, I think. 
My 1993 drawing is one of my favorites because it marked this new discovery. And I loved Hudson for saying that. Hudson was a really nice gallery and gallerist and I, he discovered me in the old fashioned way in the early nineties. And uh, we were always joking and he held up this drawing and that's when he said that, yes. And then this one, uh, also quite old drawing, 100% stupid, nothing really. And I have another one that goes with that. Um, nothing really, 100% stupid. And it says even found drawing. I also have a text with that. This is about uh, what I call my mistake drawings. And these drawings are about mistakes that we make or that make uh, um, that we are making mistakes on purpose in art. Also from 1990, this drawing, this is a marker on paper. And right? this is, uh, oh yeah, maybe I have to say this is uh, like A3 format. Yeah. Stupidity, smartness, which way to go? I think I choose for stupid and see what it brings me. Cut the paper in a strange shape. Don't want to be smart. Make mistake. Choose colors I don't like. This is really nice to do. <laughs> uh, make it look like a failure. Pretend it is meaningless and at random, like you just do whatever comes up in your mind, but do it structured. And then, you feel, you see, it does not succeed. Damn. An attempt to make a failed artwork never works. You start to like it. And the failure starts to inspire. Ugliness and beauty are very close together. Okay. <laughs> okay, now the volgende. Yeah, and this, these are still, uh, I'm showing these drawings from my early period because you see this theme of ugliness and beauty is coming back in my work all the time. People know me a lot from my flowers and uh, the positive work and they get very excited uh, about that, but they forgot that I was doing all kinds of things or not all kinds of things, a few things more. And um, but next, oh shit. Oh, let's see. Oh, here, I don't know. Wait a minute. Whoops. No, so, sorry about that. Um, oh, this one I just added this afternoon because I felt uh, I have to add it, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so sure. Um, need men, or no, not need men, it's a uh, man. It's a little painting that I still have in my house in Amsterdam. and was never sold or borrowed, uh, borrowed for an exhibition, but somehow it's my favorite. And this past half year when I was so researching in my archive, all the drawings and my notebooks, um, I found a note about, a very tiny note about this painting from 1990. This is almost 30 years ago. Um, and it said, need men. In my notebook from 1990, I write ID. I, I wrote always in my notebook, I wrote an I, I for ID and then colon, double punt, uh, and then uh, the ID came and I have notebooks with hundreds and hundreds of these IDs. This ID was make a man work, which does not show whether I am for or against men. Simply a man decoration. Nice that it is so neutral. A good neutral male work. I am a feminist, but I dislike to be against anybody. Men should make their manly work. Women should be able to do the same. So this afternoon I did thought I wanted to add that uh, this little statement because I think it's good for the total understanding of 
my work and my position in the art world. Okay, next drawing. This drawing, um, I do remember, this was really turning point in my work. This work I was making uh, with magic markers. I was just scribbling away and happy drawing. And I was with a girlfriend in New York on Lafayette Street, sitting in a room and I had my magic markers with me. And suddenly, I see there this one word, leaf, sweet leaf. It was burning on the paper. And I was thinking, oh my God, what did I do? Um, and then I realized that this, this was a very important word in my life. It was burning. I knew it was kind of forbidden, forbidden word to use in the art world. And so this word, uh, yeah, well, I'm going a bit too fast forward, but this became later on a, a theme in my work that never has left. And then this one, can I enlarge this? Yes, okay. Um, okay, I think I have a check, so where is it? Oh, yeah, yes. I love you. And this drawing I wish to be found and, uh, and I wrote a text by it. From drawing marker on paper from 89. Love songs, your lover, your sweetheart, your partner, your family, your kids. Love is the thing that drives us all. We need somebody to love and find somebody. Easier said than done. Nevertheless, the world is full of loving people that have found each other and who stay together for a lifetime. And then you say those, and then you say those magic words that you love one another. These words are only meant to be heard for those most special people in your life. The only people that kiss you on the mouth and touch you. Wow, universal value finally found. I must make an artwork on the, about this. And this was 89, yeah. Yeah, this was exciting to make this drawing and then to suddenly put those texts in there that seem to be so childish or whatever, or so a little bit forbidden because it was just, no, yeah, whatever, we'll, I talk about it later. Okay, next image. Is this correct? Oh yeah. And then here, this drawing, Lief schatje van me, my, how do I translate it? My sweetheart, my dearest baby of me, my dearest, my sweetie. Below in the corner, it says Baarmoeder Kunst. I was beginning to think a lot about uh, all kind of uh, female art. And, uh, and I saw art from women in, uh, on the Biennales and and I was seeing uh, art from women that were emancipating and, uh, and, um, um, and they were, let's say I was seeing uh, a pile of, uh, how you call that, uh, sanitary napkins with blood on it from women that menstruate. And I was thinking, oh God, this is awful. I don't like this kind of art. Yeah? And I call it uh, Bamurikus, womb, womb art. And, um, and so this was the kind of art I was not so, I thought, oh, that's yucky. I don't like this kind of art. I don't want to make this kind of art. Um, and this, I realized, I was reading about it a lot. I thought this, this is kind of uh, um, art of feminists that feel like a victim. And I did not feel a victim. I felt like I wanted to be feminine and celebrated for whatever it was. 
and no victim. And I was also not fighting against anything. I was celebrating something. I was for something. So here in this drawing, and I, and I show the only one out of thousand drawings and many drawings I did in those days, uh, because I was studying and drawing and finding out things. But each time when I made a drawing and I started to make these uh, bubbles around a shape, what you see here, these bubbles, uh, the blue, uh, the blue, uh, no, actually the blue bubbles around the pink and the yellow lines uh, and the bubble, the bubble shapes. Each time I would do that, everything started to look childish and girlish. And, um, and I was thinking, uh, what, what, what's wrong here? What's going on? Why is this, uh, this, uh, this simple image um, having this, uh, creating this meaning? You know, I came from a sort of minimalist abstract education and, uh, and this nobody ever told me that I could flip the content of the work completely by just putting some do uh, some bubbles around it. And um, okay, next one. So here a drawing where you see that I'm doing the same. This is again also magic marker drawing, and um, and I wrote a little text about this one. Sweetie darling, from 1993. Flowers, and a pink bubbly framing. I knew that makes everything I drew here was pretty and cute. I was discovering then what to do with colorful dots, curls, and a sort of pale clay kind of, kind of decoration. I knew it was childish looking. And I think people thought I was doing that to provoke, but I wasn't. I was merely adventuring in this subject matter that was kind of left out. Sweetness is not something to be ashamed of. And this is why I spoke to Godard about, uh, what did he say, it's sweet and silly? I don't think I'm silly. I think I'm, pr I'm, proud. I'm proud of the sweetness. But yeah, maybe what I uh, to quickly come on. Sorry for that. No, yeah. no, it's totally fine. Um, but wait, let me see. Um, I think I said the works which look sweet and silly turns out to be a layered whole uh, with references to art history and reflection. Oh, very good. And <laughs> yeah, I know. It reminded me of. Uh, in 94, I was making a, a big exhibition in Amsterdam um, uh, and it was all pink and curly and blah, blah. And I was getting a very big article in the Dutch newspaper and the writer wanted to headline it with Silly Lily. And I was getting so angry. Uh, well, in the end she did, she took it out, but uh, yeah, I didn't want to be looked at as being a crazy Lily yeah. uh, because I was very serious in what I was doing. And, uh, but it was a difficult uh, subject matter, mm. yeah, very difficult. But, uh, and I've had this, and later on, I've had this again, that uh, people that write about me, that I have to tell them, wait a minute, don't excuse for the sweetness because I'm proud of the sweetness. It's not, mm. uh, yeah, I'm proud of that. So, but There's uh, no irony in the sweetness. Hmm? There is no irony in the sweetness. No, not at all. Hmm. No, not at all. That a lot of people think that, but it's it's really not. It's hmm. an adventure what I do, and it's not so easy. But each time I have to say the sweetness is is really serious subject matter. This is hmm. I'm studying it. I'm studying and I'm thinking, and in a way, uh, this sweetie darling, if you could almost call it a conceptual project, 
because it's not necessarily my aesthetics. I'm just researching um, what sweetness look like or what uh, optimism looks like. But I will talk about that later again because uh, I have some more of that stuff coming up. <laughs> yes. But, uh, Hopefully, let's kijk. Oké, okay, so, oops, the next. Oké, okay, there we go. Uh, oops. This is uh, a wall painting. Um, actually, this, this is a wall painting I made in 2018 in uh, Stedelijk. But the original first wall painting, uh, Friendly Good wall painting, was from 1990. Um, and uh, I also wrote a text about it. Um, it was my first friendly wall painting. And in that time, um, I was not, oh, I hope that this text is a good text because <laughs> anyway. in that time, I was not only searching how to visualize good and bad as I did in the mistake drawing that I just showed you, um, or lie and cheat like in the drawing 1993, I was also looking for how to visualize the good and the beautiful. And I was wondering, how does beauty look like? And with me, that became the friendly and the positive. And I went out to look for symbols that could help to express that. And then in the most superficial manner, I came from working in a linear abstraction, as I told you before, and now I wanted to let in only one figurative element because I wanted to stay in the abstraction. But, and that it became a flower. Now, yeah, and then this one also an arrow. <laughs> but a lot of the, the elements in my work are all coming from the speaking, uh, how say that? This is complicated to explain. In the beginning, I, I came from a linear abstraction. I worked with lines and, and text. And the lines, when they are abstract and they become doodles, then they sl slowly get meaning. Because an underlining is a line, but it's still an underlining and you're asking for attention. Like under friendly, there is an underlining and these are black lines. And there are also blue doodles under the word friendly. And then if you have a line and you put a hook on it, you have an arrow. So, so that is where I came from, from uh, linear and linear becomes text. Um, and um, so that became a flower, flowers, uh, and it was stylized rather flat flower, painted with simple, but I think beautiful colors. And I added a little bit of fluorescent color in the paint to make the colors even more fresh. And like in the yellow that you see here and the green and the, and the pink and the red has a little bit, or not a little bit, has fluorescent in it. And, and uh, this you cannot buy in the store. You have to mix it yourself. And it makes the color uh, jump out. Huh? So that the colors, as it were, spray off the wall with optimism. It was a conceptual project in a way because it wasn't necessarily my beauty. This new topic was exciting and people react to it immediately, often dismissive. People said to me, wow, this cannot be art. Yeah, so positive, they couldn't believe what they saw. On the other hand, especially in New York, people more understood the fun of my work. There I heard people say at my opening, oh, we totally get this. Love stuff. Yeah. So that was interesting. That was very interesting. And this artwork became decisive to, for the rest or decide I is the good word yeah decisive for the rest of my career after this I started making friendly work 
again and again. Because the negative response challenged me to look further into what was going on here. Something naive, something immature, and what was really wrong with immaturity? I soon find, found out that what I was doing was girlish too. And then I made wonderful and kusje, kusje, kissy. In this one in Museum Fodor in Amsterdam in 1991, I made, uh, this was part of a bigger solo, but this wall, um, I paint three times, kusje, ja, kusje, ja, kusje, ja, kissy, yes. And I titled the complete wall with the name, three studies for kissy, three studies for kusje. Because I knew that the words that the word kissy radiated something one dimensional. But I wanted to point out with this title that this perhaps superficial appearing word raises an interesting topic, namely affection. And certainly worth studying its means of expression. Because I gave my boyfriend a regular kiss every day. And I thought it was so important in my life that I should be able to make a piece of art about it. Okay, next. Okay, this is in the, I'm back to drawing again. Um, so in my new subject matter, friendly, I go a little bit further even because here I'm going into the pink, uh, into the pink world, uh, a little more extreme. This one I call uh, love explosion and sometimes I call it hallelujah. And this one uh, I made several times as a wall painting and I must say that this is not such a good picture, maybe because of the color, because it's all fluorescent pink and fluorescent green and orange. And you see in the middle, it is a bit like a hot spot. But this was in New York in uh, 92, my second exhibition with my uh, with gallery feature, with my gallerist Hudson. And, um, and um, yeah, I wrote a piece about this love explosion in 1990. I was 36 years old. I drew a wall painting design in pink, orange, yellow, and titled it Love Explosion or Hallelujah. I executed it for the first time as a fluorescent pink wall painting in Villa Arson in the exhibition No Man's Time in 1991 in Nice, France. Was it rebellious? Yes, yes, it was rebellious. <laughs> um, was it anti-art? No. Was it weird? Yes, of course. And was I aware of what I was doing? Vaguely. Looking back now, I think my time in anarchistic art politicized New York in the 80s had taken away my concepts of decent quality art making. And it had my, had my, uh, my idee over brave aesthetic kunstmaken weggenomen. Want in New York was zo'n rauwe wereld, alles kon. Confronted with exciting new art forms like concrete poetry, abstract filmmaking, noise music, and punk in my gender bending neighborhood, the Lower East Side, had swiped away all and opened up for everything. Love, I had taken with me from my young woman teenage years and even 
my decent Dutch art school did not get it out of my mind that something had to be done with it. It somehow did not appear in anything that was around in the art I saw. In my new second home town, New York City, anything would go. So I drew in pink, what else? The superficial words to make my point most clear and to get the subject matter out, make it as sweet as possible, overdo it and enlarge it so it will be noticed. So this is almost like a manifest, <laughs> I see. Anyway, so this is uh, my next. Yeah, see, this is another one of the, I also call this one love explosion of Liebde, uh, ex explosive van Liebde. And this was, this was part of the same exhibition in uh, Amsterdam, in Museum Folder in 91. And I'm using those very difficult word, Liefde, Kusje, Vriendelijk. That was really weird to do that. And people were walking out of the exhibition with their finger up and saying, uh, you are not good, you're not. Uh, they were saying, wow, this, stick, this is all 60 stuff and people did not really get it. Plus it was bright in color and it was, uh, yeah. No, very interesting, not to worry. And we continue, let's see, oops, oh yeah. Yeah, this is another one of those pink wall paintings in those days I made in 94 um, and uh, in my gallery in New York. And it was opposite of another wall painting in fluorescent orange and this was fluorescent pink. And I exhibited only pink drawings. Uh, and I was totally into curls and, uh, and, uh, and I think in, in those days I, I uh, I had an interview with John Waters, a film director, and I think I even said that uh, something that I was drew, drooling from happiness while I was making those curly drawings. It was something because being brought up with the Bauhaus and, uh, and minimalism and uh, Mondrian, um, I, was getting, uh, I was getting the orna ornament back into my life. And it was so nice, so uh, lekker, so delicious to make things that had curls that uh, it was, uh, it was, it came from within, right? And this was titled, oh yeah, that's why I put it in. It was titled Curly Q and Curly Q, uh, the Dutch word is uh, for Curly Q is Tierlantijntje. And Tirantijntje, I don't know in Belgium if you have that word too, but I think it has a lot, it's a beautiful Dutch word, word, word uh, for um, smallness and embellishment, huh? for versiering uh, and for, ja, laten we zeggen, onzinnige, oppervlakkige, waardeloze versiering. And that is precies waar mijn onderzoek naar uitging. And then we, uh, then we are a few years later. This, uh, the last one was 94, and this is more mid 90s, uh, I think 98. And um, in mid 90s, my work changed. Um, uh, it's not that I stopped doing the pink work or the, the curly work. Uh, some other subject matter came into my art and this was a wall painting I made in a restaurant of the Habitat in London. And, um, and I started to make um, art that had my age in it my, and the age of my boyfriend, of my mother. And I started to name names and I started to get uh, uh, people in the names of people in my work and I call them the name pieces. And I think here, yeah, here you see uh, a work I made in my, with my gallery in Paris. Okay, oh yeah, this, this one, Jack 
Lily and Jack are now living together for 10 years. And, um, and then this one, Jack is 60, I am 44. This, by the way, was later bought by the Bonnefonten Museum and is now still in that collection. But they, uh, they, they bought it from that show and they, uh, uh, how to say that, they, um, we had to repaint it, man, because that's a technical thing of my work that maybe I could touch now. The, uh, because if I make a wall painting in a gallery, then um, I have to, uh, if it gets sold, I have to make the exact same painting somewhere else uh, in the museum in this case. So I did and they bought it and then they painted over and a few years later, they want to get it out of the collection and we had, we had to come again and paint it again. And after the fourth time, then the museum was getting smart and, um, uh, and now they have uh, built a wall in front of the wall painting, it's very smart. And then later they can take the wall away and they don't need me anymore. So, but this is very di a difficult part of wall painting eh, to uh, how to get it in, in collections and it's, the wall paintings are practically un impossible to sell, I can tell you. But um, anyway, back to uh, this exhibition in Paris. Um, I remember I was standing uh, where the photo was taken was actually the entrance. And it was uh, a big opening night in, uh, in the uh, Rue Louise Weiss, where a lot of galleries were then. And, um, uh, and I was standing next to the door to see people uh, come in and I saw people looking at my work and their mouth was going like they had no idea what they were seeing. Yeah, I was not aware that I was doing something that people didn't think it was art, but later on also uh, in, the, in the Bonavante Museum, sometimes curators came there and they said they didn't think it was art anyway. But um, but uh, yeah, I wrote a text about this, uh, so I'm going to read that, if I didn't tell it already. Um, this, oh yeah, this is from 1980, 1998. In the same time as I made the I Am 42 artwork, I started to make drawings about me and Jack my partner of our ages and our living together in the mid nineties and things changed. I was more in Amsterdam than in New York. I find, found a note on my desk with our ages, but it was from some years ago, some years back. I decided to use that as a starting point. So remember the lying and the cheating? Yes, this was not true. It not being true anymore at that moment, I decided not to change that and treat it as a sketch that inspired me. The artist's relationship and partner's name and ages mentioned in an artwork is sort of, who cares? People have noticed and asked me several times about the not coherent, correct ages in the different Jack and Lily wall paintings. But does it matter? What does matter? is that our ages keep us busy. Now, my new partner is 77, but that was last year. I have some girlfriends that are my age, 66. Some are younger, like 57, 58. My assistant is 42. The youngest is 26. My father would have been 111 if he still had lived. Yeah, and then here, this is a funny piece because in the same time as I made what I call the name pieces, I also started to make art about every day, about, uh, about money, about relationships between people. And I was being very honest about it. And when I painted this piece in the gallery in Amsterdam, Kees and ik gaan list kunstenaar we vechten altijd over, ons BTW, over de BTW en onze verkoopprijzen. 
it's uh, it means uh, case and me case galleries me artist we always fight about the, the value added tax the VAT in our sales prices and this walking I was only halfway painting it and the artist from the gallery next door came in and all started to have discussions about the value added tax in sale prices and this was yeah like a horrible kind of problem that um, well I was not only having only one having fights about that and uh, it's funny because now a uh, case and me we are still uh, I'm still working with this gallerist and uh, and we still have to laugh each time when we sell something about the the, the, the complicated uh, invoices with the value out of text but yeah and I think I wrote another piece about the name pieces okay let's see if I'm If I wanted to read that, yeah, maybe I do that. I do it quickly. Um, after my Jack and Lily series, I almost automatically went into a new series, which I titled the name pieces. I started to mention and draw the names of people from my surrounding world in the wall painting designs. Family names, friends, people from the art world that I knew and worked with. It was private, but less emotional than people almost automatically sought, but more, say, conceptually detached. Mentioning people I know did not automatically meant that I liked them. Because it is, you do something like that and people uh, connect all kinds of opinions right away to it, which is funny, yeah. But then social interaction is maybe my most loved part of life. And privacy is another thing that I really wanted to get into my art. Names of unknown people and a bit from the art world about us, us, the art world. Because I could make uh, all kinds of private remarks about people working in the grocery shops, but no, this is shown in the art world, so it has to be about us. Yeah, because art professions are the ones that look the most at my art, so it had to be about them. And I made several exhibitions around this subject and I titled them Small Talk Gossip, yeah? Roddle, and so the Small Talk, uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I made three exhibitions with the name pieces titled Small Talk in the Ludwig Museum in 2003 and in the, my gallery in Amsterdam, Galerie van Gelder. And I titled it, it Geklets. And in 2003, I made my first large book titled Family and Friends. Okay, this text goes away, that text goes away. Oops. Okay. Okay, this is another piece. Um, and this piece I made in this, what Springler, let me see, Springer, Springler Museum, no, somewhere in uh, Hamburg or Hanover, I, I forget now. Um, wall painting. Wall painting couch, carpet bag. I wrote a text about it. Um, titled Female Friends. And in the wall painting, you see all my female friends have a kid. And a little bit below, you see always talk about pregnancy stuff. You see a couch and a wall painting hanging over it. Speech bubbles in which I write that most of my female friends have a kid. And always talk about pregnancy stuff. I am complaining here. It's a complaint artwork. A garbage egg bag is added, a domestic element, clean up that garbage. 
left at random with this artwork. 2000, I am then in my mid forties and the decision not to have kids I had made by then. This was a choice that we, the baby boomer generation of women had. Birth control, career or family. Most of my friends my age and our school decided not to have kids. But then later I met a generation of younger women artists and suddenly they all had a kid. They all <laughs> disappeared one after one. They suddenly had a kid. It was not so easy. Yeah, I mean, uh, because, no, yeah. because we had, we would have meetings in the club and then, uh, and then before we talked about philosophy and uh, art business and suddenly, no, yeah, no more of that. Um, Okay. I saw how some of them, it damaged their careers. And I saw also their happiness. And I personally, I loved their kids, their kids, yes. I never had felt a desire to have kids and I felt okay with it. But I had mixed feelings. An issue not able to simply wipe out of my life. I had to deal with it. I made several drawings and wall paintings of it. I made Biba Baby Bloomer. Let's see if that's the next one. Oops. Oh, that's not the next one. Ba baby, another baby. All my no baby friends live in New York. Yeah, there was for some reason all my friends in Holland, all my girl, uh, artist uh, woman friends. They suddenly had, whoops, a baby, oh, uh, suddenly got married. Um, and then, but in New York, I had also a whole group of friends, all women, but all my no baby friends live in New York. So I made an artwork of, of it. Okay, and then this one, okay. oops. Oh yeah, this is a funny drawing, I think. Oh, no, yeah. Oh yeah. This one. Yeah, I never installed this piece and I still think I should do it, but it's kind of a weird text. I had it hanging in my show uh, this uh, last winter in the Mikros Museum. And I remember I was doing a tour in my exhibition and I was so happy that I found out for myself. I immediately said, this is a complain art. <laughs> I was feeling a little bit guilty that I was complaining, but I thought, that's it. It's a complaint artwork. Um, um, so, okay, so I made this uh, Biba Baby Boomer work, and then, uh, now yeah, then I made, oh no, <laughs> I have to make it smaller again. Oops. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and this, another, uh, uh, baby subject. Um, yeah, this is a very big piece on uh, canvas, uh, wood and canvas, and we made it also uh, uh, last year in the show I had in the Mikos Museum, and it's like uh, uh, four by three meters, so it's a very big piece, childcare. And uh, but the original is a drawing that I made uh, in ninety in ninety one or so. And um, so that was exciting to make that, to materialize this kind of small work that I was, when I made it in 1990, I was a little bit hesitant and scared of what I was making. But over the years grew my confidence and, and also in the past years, I, want, I was thinking, wow, let's make that work. Let's make it bigger yeah? because this is what, uh, what it was meant to be when I drew it in 1990. Yeah. Okay, so what did I write down? Uh, a baby graffiti, all the stuff that I was making, baby graffiti design in 1990. Uh, now I'm gonna skip this. The, the cute loveliness of it made me drool and enjoy kitsch, cuteness, smallness, 
This was all new subject matter. Then on the boring subject of education of children, I made a wall painting titled Happy Childhood by parents that give children goals that are achievable. This was, this was kind of a difficult subject matter. If you have uh, work like that in a show and you are standing at your opening, then all kinds of people, well, women come to you and they all start to talk about their family problems and uh, because that's my work is about that. So, okay, let's, they want to talk about it. It's interesting. And uh, so, but I think it's sort of a very, uh, little bit shy and not sexy subject matter. And that for female art is like, um, it's like uh, a little bit difficult. It's not uh, because you see a lot of, uh, or in, in, the, in the 90s, I saw uh, various female artists making, uh, making an entrance, but very often it was about subject matter like sex abuse, uh, there was a sort of aggressiveness in that type of work and fine, but there is also a different element in the work and in the lives of men and women and a very boring subject matter like education of children. Why can you not make art about that? And this is what I'm trying to do here. And I also made, uh, well, yeah, I'm still back to my text. A little, yeah. And I also made, what was what, this my name? Yeah, and then I'm going to a drawing again back. Uh, also, this is, I think, from 93, and the size of this is, it's a very tiny drawing, eh? so it's this big. And here, because I organized a gallery in the 80s, and here in this drawing, I'm fancying a little provocative, I cannot deny that. Uh, if I would again organize a gallery, it would be family oriented. It's, it's again, I realize when, I, when I'm drawing this, that I am touching a sort of very complicated and maybe boring, boring forbidden subject matter. Yeah, uh, what does it say? Yeah. And how and I, I say in my text, and how about the drawing? If I would again organize a gallery, it would be family oriented. All these express the dilemma women of my generation had and still have, and how these can become subject matter for art. Okay, so I said my thing here next. Okay, and now I'm jumping in the time because. Um, uh, here, uh, this is 2015, um, and the other work I showed was the Jack and Lily and the, 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 and the, the female uh, complaint stuff was all in the 2000s, 2000, late 90s. Here it is 2015, and this is a wall painting I made for the lobby of the Hammer Museum in uh, Los Angeles. When they asked me, I, I went there to look at the space and uh, I looked at the history of that lobby where a lot of artists had made beautiful things. And because of course I knew that they knew what I was making and I was thinking, ah, they want me to make another flower, blah, 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 wall. And, uh, yeah. And I thought, nah, not this time. And I somehow felt I wanted to do something with text. Also because they also offered me that I would use the windows outside of the museum and also in the courtyard, I would, could continue with doing things in those windows. And in my notebooks, I started to make uh, long texts and I was thinking I'm going to make a whole text that begins uh, on the outside of the museum, then go into the lobby and then courtyard. And I had all these funny texts and wow. Uh, yeah, and then, um, and then slowly, slowly, I created this artwork and um, uh, um, and I had somebody to help me to do it in Photoshop. And uh, first we had all the text on the on that side and then in the middle. And, but I knew I wanted to do use the word washing and cleaning, organize and tidy. 
Um, and then the work was a lot of front grade because somehow it seemed like all these texts, all the little texts that came out, it was as if uh, I had gathering all this work for years and now it's, it's just, just came out, so it was fun. Um, um, all the little text that you see, um, now first I have to tell you the, the bigger text, washing and cleaning, organized and tidy. In, uh, in Dutch, I would say, um, because uh, the title of the total work is called uh, Tidy Kitchen. So in Dutch, I would say, opgeruimde keuken. And here I'm using these, again, boring words, I don't know, boring, but um, Washing and cleaning, eh, massen en schoonmaken, uh, organized and tidy, georganiseerd uh, en netjes. Ja, yeah, these are sort of uh, forbidden words, I think, uh, maybe not anymore <laughs> in the art world. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, um, because there is this, it goes against the romantic idea of artists uh, that uh, drink and make a mess. Um, and here I'm, I'm, this work, as some people saw it, um, is not a, a lamentation. It's not a complaining of me about uh, cleaning. Uh, it's actually the opposite. It's actually a celebration of, uh, uh, celebration of cleaning, the house cleaning the body, and it's not necessarily me cleaning the house. Luckily, I have somebody who does it for me, but it is uh, for all the men and women that clean our houses and also uh, taking care of our bodies, um, for ourselves, taking care of our bodies ourselves. Um, all those activities um, and um, so that was very exciting to, for once, put that on a wall. Um, the smaller text that you see, uh, the heated dust stuck glued on the Venetian blinds, pulling hair, pulling out hair from the drain, haartjes uit het afvoerputje halen. These are all things that uh, are uh, texts that relate to a, a little story of an experience of me in my own household. A uh, wooden spoon between the dishwasher door to dry the dishes. This, I had to explain that I do it again. It's, I'm putting uh, my uh, dishwasher, my dishwasher, um, if the, the cycle is done, then I don't know how to get it dry. It always stays wet. So what we always do is we put it half a bit open put a, a spoon between it, a wooden spoon, and then in a few hours it's dry. So this wooden spoon between dishwasher door to dry the dishes. Yeah, another detail. And here we see the, see how big it was. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. I wrote a text about it, but I think I won't read it. Um, I want to go back to this one. Um, because here in the corner, the right lower corner, you see one that is kind of standing out in this complete piece. It says crying, crying for 320 P dollar, oh, the dollars per day, eight hours a day. And uh, this one is a bit different. And why is that? Um, because, um, I think um, uh, I, I'm fantasying in this piece uh, about earning money uh, when I'm crying or when people cry. Of course, crying, I think, is a, is a interesting activity. Um, uh, in a way, I'm fantasying, uh, well, how to explain it? Um, yeah, actually, in the total piece, the uh, washing and cleaning, it is about um, um, uh, the cleaning activities of people who do that, but also 
like the crying, I also want people to get money for it and more than they what they get now. So next, okay. And this is uh, also 2015. This is in Holland somewhere, Dr. Bosse, my high arts, Dr. Bosse. Uh, my, uh, how do you say that in English, my uh, GP, um, yeah, my regular doctor, is the name of my doctor in Amsterdam. I asked him permission to use his name. Um, this drawing is still from my name pieces from the late uh, 90s or and the two early 2000s. Then I made this drawing. But only in 2015, uh, I was able to make this uh, wall painting. And it was so interesting to do that because uh, of this uh, new subject matter that uh, I was getting, uh, getting uh, involved with, uh, and that is uh, healthcare. Yes. This was a wall painting I did uh, in my uh, solo exhibition in the Stedelijk. Um, and um, in the Stedelijk, I had like six rooms and it was a sort of a retrospective exhibition. So I started with the mistake painting, mistake uh, wall painting and friendly goods and my name pieces. and. Uh, the last room, I was making a new work, and these were two new wall paintings. Um, and um, and I remember that uh, it was a little bit, uh, Ooh, what is she doing now, uh, the curator of the museum? But um, it was very exciting and uh, to do this. Um, and Caroline in Wersen, my physiotherapist, she came to the opening and she was standing in front of it with all her whole family and, and she started to point and say, it's me, it's me. And uh, I think she had to cry. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, but then this was a weird piece because um, uh, Susan Blankensop, my physiotherapist in New York, Caroline in Wersen, my, my physiotherapist in Amsterdam. Uh, so, uh, it's interesting because these are, um, I'm invading in these people's lives because I'm putting their names uh, on the wall of a museum and I asked the permission in this case, I don't always do that, but in this case I did. Um, and, um, and then, uh, and it is uh, about uh, uh, healthcare, but it's not, uh, it's not a psychoanalyst. It's not uh, uh, some other. Uh, it's just. It's uh, only uh, on the in the hierarchy of doctors. The physiotherapist is just quite regular um, or common. It's maybe the word. Um, so I liked that, and uh, and these two very powerful wall paintings were at the end of my exhibition. And uh, I did uh, in the reviews in the newspaper. I don't think they got it, but the but the um, I noticed that most of my galleries that were at the opening and the people I admire most that they totally got these pieces, and uh, so I was encouraged to continue with it and to do more with it, which I pack a small. Okay, so the exhibition that followed uh, uh, after this uh, was an exhibition in New York, uh, in Tribeca, and this was uh, uh, the exhibition with the state was 2018, and this is 2019, just uh, the fall right before the corona uh, started. And I made the, I made exhibition in a new space, uh, and uh, and this was uh, the entrance wall painting. And the wall is not really a very nice wall. It's actually quite ugly, and uh, 
I, at first I thought, what am I going to do with this terrible wall? Because, uh, yeah. But then I, what you don't see in the picture is that on the right side, you have the window and the street people walk by and you, the computer that you see is quite neat in, my, in the picture, my, but actually my gallerists and the assistants are, when the exhibition was going on, were sitting right in front of this wall painting. And um, to explain this exhibition, I had simplified it for myself and also to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, I see that not so heavy, a little bit funny. When people came in, I would point to this uh, wall painting and I would say, here we have the deadly diseases. And then, okay, this is uh, to see how we do it. And then when you enter the next space, you would see this big wall painting. And I would say, so here you see the deadly diseases. There, I said, you see all my um, healthcare practitioners' names. And then uh, when you see this uh, sculpture, on the sculpture, you see all the medicines that I'm using at the moment. So this was a pretty big uh, project to make. And uh, um, I think I can see if I can make that bigger. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty nice. Oops, see that teapot? Yeah, this uh, sculpture, uh, I think I titled it Washing Machine. I'm not sure anymore. I titled Washing Machine. And the bigger piece on the wall, I titled uh, H65H, nay, H65. Dot 75, yeah, I see it. Yeah. Now yeah, I can talk a lot about this, but this I think we're getting close to the last image. Um like a small. Oh, and here you see us installing. You see Eva and Ine, my assistant. Every time when I make wall paintings, and it is a big project like this, I have a whole crew of people that help me, and it's usually it's uh, a lot of magic going on and uh, people are all working long hours and uh, to see the artwork grow and uh, yeah, it's a fabulous uh, thing to do. Anyway, I think this is, the, this is the previous, there's one more image and then I'm going to this one. And that is uh, what my snel beter uh, get better soon. This is a Photoshop design for uh, an, a building in Belgium, in Kortrijk. And this is uh, supposed to be happening this summer in Belgium. And so if you want to go see it, um, you, could, you can uh, go see it. But um, anyway, so this was, uh, this, let's see what time it is. I have talked a very long time, but uh, yeah. So this was my, my story. <laughs> and maybe the, if you want to see it in Belgium, it's in uh, Kortrijk. Yeah, it's in Kortrijk. And uh, I must say, unfortunately, uh, this is supposed to be a wall painting. Um, oh yeah, this design actually is from, I can tell that the drawing is from uh, 92 or 93 from my uh, Wishing You Well uh, series. Um, and it's very interesting that now, uh, almost 30 years later, uh, I can install this work uh, in a Dutch environment and a public space. And suddenly, for me at least, I think it makes total sense to have that piece right now on the street in uh, the difficult times that we are all going through. And um, Oh yeah. So, but uh, fortunately, they. Uh, I told already to go there that uh, that they. Uh, it's not going to be a wall painting, but it's going to be a billboard. But, but I do like the Photoshop design. So, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Lily. I think it was really uh, <laughs> interesting, and it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a. It was. I think it was a very nice way to get inside your practice and your. Uh, world yeah uh, I think maybe we have time for a couple of questions uh yeah. not too many 
it's already almost half past uh, nine, I think. Yeah, half past oh, nine. Did everybody go? No, we still have uh, an audience. So if you <laughs> want to ask a question, go for it. Uh, but maybe I uh, will start with the first question. Yeah. And we had to think about it uh, when we were talking about uh, silly and funny and also when we were talking about um, in your early works that you tried to make a fail artwork um, and it doesn't work uh, because in the end it becomes a nice artwork. And then I was wondering, um, do you think it's uh, difficult to make art? or it should be difficult, or do you have the feeling you work hard? Yeah, I do work hard, but difficult, no. Mm -hmm. No, I would never say that because it's much too nice to do. But yeah, but the making an art career is, is uh, yeah, it's is, is difficult, yes. I think so, it's yeah. Not but... an easy, it's not an easy profession, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's art, to make art is a difficult, well, what, what, I, what I mean is this idea of an artist who is torturing himself uh, to come with an artwork. And then if I see what you are uh, making and also what you are saying, you are against this, uh, yeah, in a way, making it too complicated or uh, um, like it's about this directness in a way. And then I'm wondering, I can, I can imagine that it's, it's, it's also a method or a strategy to not believe that it should be this very difficult way of uh, making something, like torturing yourself. Oh, no, yeah, I, I would be against torturing myself uh, or uh, anybody else, but, but, uh, but it's true that, uh, that uh, if you make art that uh, you are doing, you are constantly on an adventurous uh, research project and uh, the research, one thing comes out of the other, you know? And so that is the, that should go in an easy manner because if it's not going in an easy manner, then yeah, then you have a life full of unhappiness and that is, no, well, no, yeah, this is not uh, how I do it. No, hmm. no. I think maybe that also explains why it feels like a very uh, comprehensive body of work, um, especially maybe that's also because how you talk about it now, but the first drawing where you write Hoy, uh, it feels very much connected to uh, the work we see behind you, for example, uh, or the, the, well, the work about Alles Komt Goed, or uh, that you're making now in Kortrijk. What? To make what? Yeah, like the work that you showed the oh, last... Kortrijk. Yeah, in Kortrijk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then uh, it's not that I suddenly make this one drawing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I make one drawing after the other. So, and there are always little changes. So the whole process is slowly, slowly growing. Mm -hmm. And you always have a lot of work under your hands. Mm -hmm. So the... Uh, uh, yeah, no, I must say, uh, in now I'm not drawing so much anymore because I have assistants and, uh, uh, or maybe, but, well, I still draw a lot, but, no, yeah, how to say that, uh, but I used to draw on my own in, let's say, the 80s, and I would put the music on, I would like, love to hear sort of uh, cacophony music, and then I would just sit and draw for eight hours a day, you know, from one thing to the other and just fantasy every direction. So if it wasn't fun, um, no, I, I would not, uh, it was, it is, it was fun because otherwise uh, why I would, would not torture myself sitting there for eight hours then and, and make drawings, mm -hmm. listen to nice music and, and read, uh, read things that inspire me and then, um, and then let it all come out. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but of course, uh, an artist uh, is doing more than just make aesthetic, uh, pleasant objects. Mm -hmm. The artist uh, is uh, making uh, things that are um, a materialization of the, 
uh, all impressions that uh, that you gather in your life and then there is more going on uh, in artwork artwork is just uh, the materialization of uh, this sort of life philosophy uh, uh, thing and um, and that is i think uh, what artists do is that they uh, they have a uh, sort of life philosophy and uh, and uh, and they put it in, in the artwork and uh, and they and they are uh, working on making the next step uh, and the next step is uh, is uh, what uh, you have to find out for yourself uh, and this is what i say sometimes that uh, if you if you are a young artist and you are looking at the art world and you are missing something, then you have to make that. Mm -hmm. That's, and then you are finding this hole in the market and mm -hmm. then you make your own invention. And, and maybe that's what you sometimes read that artists make only one invention in a, in a lifetime. But, uh, but that is what, when you are young, you are trying to uh, look uh, to find your subject matter Mm -hmm. and then, uh, and this you you only you can only find it by uh, by uh, trial and error yeah by uh, going there by making it yeah by just doing it and making it and 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 making it again and again and again and talking about it talking with your fellow artists and mm -hmm. talk with your partner and go and see other art shows and see what's going on and see what went on in the past and then you can determine what the future will be and what your next step will be. Mm -hmm. and then and then uh, and then you hope that. Uh, I recent, the, just recently I talked to a student and saying to her that that uh, that in in your early years you constantly make mistakes, you constantly make mistakes, you constantly make failures, and then. Uh, because in the beginning you're not so smart and then you are but then you learn from the mistakes and then and then you slowly slowly build up i think you know because an artist path is, is has many there are many options many ways to do it mm -hmm. and within, within this met, this materialization of uh, your life philosophy so to say um, I'm quite interested in the relation of uh, language in your work, uh, especially since like there is a lot of direct language uh, in it, but then you're also uh, writing text now. So I was wondering this materialization that uh, turns into a mural, uh, it also turns into a, a writing maybe. I was wondering <laughs> yeah. how you yeah. think relations. Yeah, no, I do like the writing, and the writing uh, is probably going to be a book uh, uh, and published uh, with, uh, because some people want to make a book with uh, a lot of drawings, and uh, so we'll see what kind of shape it's going to get, and uh, yeah, so this is really nice, and, uh, the, and I like uh, writing about my work. Maybe also I want to do it because I have seen a lot of people write about my work and I disagree. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I sometimes have fights with writers that say things about my work and I say, what the hell, What's, what are you writing, you know? Mm -hmm. this, uh, um, you know? So that's, um, but also there are people who write fabulous things and it's always uh, a big gift if they do that. But, mm -hmm. uh, but with my show in the, in the, in the Netherlands, the, in the, in the State Museum, I was getting a lot of press, a lot, like every newspaper and every magazine who wrote about it, but it's all quite superficial. And, um, and then maybe this is what uh, my work is, uh, is, ch is the challenge is that they write so superficial that this I don't know, but, but uh, yeah, why, uh, uh, yeah. So I think my work is much more adventurous and I ex ex I'm actually expecting writers to be adventurous too and to mm. also do their homework and see here I'm getting a little bitter. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, so this is maybe another reason why I write because I think my subject matter is not so easy. The subject mm -hmm. matter of uh, feminism, the sweetness, um, it's a very difficult subject matter. I've seen that in the past 30, 40 years because um, when I first started to deal with the, the subject matter of the feminine, um, uh, I started to read about it. And then you notice that there were se several times attempts to make big exhibitions in Paris and in Los Angeles about, about this. But every time it was so difficult to make a good exhibition about it because people were so uh, criticizing it so easily. And it's such a, it's such an artist do get labeled uh, uh, so strongly. And um, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for women to make, uh, to do the art, uh, what they want to do uh, in, in a manner that is uh, whatever they want to do. You know, it's, uh, and then, uh, what men make uh, is never questioned. Uh, mm -hmm. They make their art and we are used to it, but if women do it, if, they, if, it's, too, if it's feminine, then you get labeled, oh, what you do is uh, girl art. Mm -hmm. And if they say, well, because this, that's what they say to me, you are making uh, girl art, yeah, that's not, a, it's not uh, mostly not a positive uh, label. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something to really think about what's going well, on there. One will say to a male artist, uh, you make very male artworks. Yeah, I wish they would do that. Yeah. And, and maybe sometimes they are doing that, but mm -hmm. this is just uh, this subject matter or this kind of emancipation is, uh, is not so raw. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. So maybe that is why uh, in my work, I've always chosen the fun part, mm -hmm. because I think the difficult subject matter that I am dealing with is really good to put uh, uh, fun on the, as, a, as a tool to carry it, because um, of course it just helps uh, it helps the difficult issue to get it on the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and yeah, so. Uh. Well, since I teach a course on artist writings, I can only uh, agree. I, I teach a course on artist writings uh, in Kask. So can I, I can only agree the importance of uh, writing about your work. Um, I have a question from uh, Paul de Metz. And he's asking, to which extent are you influenced by comics and cartoons? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I guess I'm influenced by it, uh, not so uh, consciously, but more in the background. I was growing up with that, of course, yes. Because I do think in, the, in my early years, I remember discussions I had with other artists about the flatness of my work. and. Um, and I think, um, let's say in, in my work or in other artists' work, but in my work here, that um, the reason why you do certain things, for instance, in what you see in the background here, this is an old work, by the way, the, the flatness and the superficiality of the flowers, all the choices that I make are, um, and because you are a professional artist and you work on it all day, all day for years, you know, you get a certain professionality and you have studied, you know what went on in the past. Uh, you've studied your contemporary, so you know what's going on now. Um, then your choices are getting to be very, very precise. Mm -hmm. And some of the choices you make in your art, in your, the material, the, 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 the use of the material, the use of the line, what type of line, everything has a, has a meaning. And uh, some of the choices you make, you cannot really, um, really go back to the root of why did I exactly do that? But for all the details in your work is a reason. Mm -hmm. And because, yeah, for instance, I, uh, I just take one thing out of it. I think it's uh, possible that I've used the, that I'm 
I chose for the flatness because I grew up in my art school with teachers that were doing the opposite of flatness. They worked abstract, but there was always a texture in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I guess I am just finishing with that, you know, mm -hmm. not of that texture. No Picasso, no Carl Apple. Um, uh, so that, that uh, there, um, so maybe comic strip, but uh, but but I think it's deeper than that. Mm -hmm. But then maybe to elaborate on that flatness, is it important to physically make the drawing? Because you could also say, I make a print. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, but this is not what I do. Yeah, this is, uh, I never made, I never made a print. And, and the, the funny thing is, I never really felt a painter because, um, but then on the other hand, the history of painting uh, and the paint, contemporary painting, my knowledge of that is, is big. Um, yeah, my less now, now that I'm getting older, but yeah, some years ago I was very informed. Huh? And then, um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Um, what about the printing? You were, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, yeah, I didn't feel like a painter, um, a painter painter, because uh, I didn't use an easel, I didn't, I was not uh, using oil paint, and uh, that's what I've learned in art school. But my paintings are very, it's more logistic and it's organized and I don't even, if I have an exhibition and I tell people for a joke, I say, well, I didn't even touch the wall this time mm -hmm. uh, because my assistants, they uh, paint on the wall uh, and they are like shocked. And, uh, but um, so, so the, I, uh, for many years, I didn't feel even a painter. Um, so this is a very kind of uh, uh, is that yeah. the word discrepancy? It's a it's a it's kind of a, an, uh, um, a stra no, yeah, it's a strange thing mm -hmm. that uh, that this is how I feel, but I don't know where it comes from. But uh, it's more yeah, I think. Uh, but it but like I come back to what I said earlier. But the choices I make are very precise. Mm -hmm. I didn't on the on the on the on the T crossing. I went right. Mm. Left, I went a certain way. I didn't go into the way of printmaking. I mm. went into the way of making uh, paintings. And but I can imagine with talking about the history of painting. That's why you don't see yourself maybe as a painter. Is because it's relating very much to art history. I think and to uh, thinking about art in general, but maybe not necessarily about uh, the history of uh, painting. Well, one second, my boyfriend is coming in. Yeah? Oh yeah, I would like to have some more tea. What to say again? What? Yeah, so that, that, that maybe why you don't see yourself necessarily as a painter um, is because it's uh, your work is very much relating to art, I think, to, to the position of art and what art could be, but maybe not specifically the history of painting. It's not necessarily dealing with that. Well, if you look to- Yeah, but I do, I do think actually my work does relate to the history of painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, but that is like a complicated uh, topic. But I really do think that it does relate to it because if you see see the steps I'm making and where I'm coming from, uh, I do think that I do relate to men who make monochromes and I love them. Yeah, I still have to say that I have to add that. Uh, but but then the thing it seems like I'm doing the total opposite. But in but but nevertheless there is a big relationship. Mm -hmm. And and if you read the brochure that goes with the the the, the, the artwork that I made in uh, in Ghent, yeah, where you are in Ghent, in the, the the piece I did there, nothing really. This is also a nothing really work. Okay, what did I say? Nothing really. No, nothing. But this work is from '93. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but I and uh, it's, I made them made it as a painting, or I didn't make it, but some other people. Um, only recently, it became a, a real painting. Mm -hmm. Maybe one uh, last question. It's from uh, Naomi S. She wrote it down here. Uh, hi, Lily. This is Naomi. In my performance practice, I question deliverance versus non-deliverance. What does deliverance mean to you? And as an artist, as a woman, uh, thank you for uh, delivering some of your thoughts. P.S. Kusje. Well, I don't understand the word deliverance. I what think you can mean? read it uh, as uh, verlossing or uh, bevrijding. Le bevrijding. Maybe Naomi, if I'm wrong, please tell me. But I think it's it's like salvation, uh, release. But maybe I read it wrong. Eh? But this is. Deliverance as delivering for an audience. Ah, yeah, okay. So maybe how you see you, your work as something performative, is that what you mean, uh, Naomi? It's afleveren. I don't know if you can answer it. Yeah, I don't understand the question. Yeah, so in uh, she writes in Nederland letterlijk iets afleveren. Yes, indeed, with the text, could it be seen as a sort of performative aspect? Oh, the, the, the text in my work. I think so, yeah. Or your work as itself. How you uh, deliver something to an audience. Uh, and Paul de Metz is saying, uh, Naomi means het aanbieden van diensten in de vorm van een kunstwerk. Hmm, I don't get the question. Aanbieden van diensten, wat voor dienst dan? Ja, yeah, it, it is a service uh, dat je werk een dienst is of geen dienst. Nee, dat snap ik, snap het niet. Sorry, nee. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the question. Maybe an, another uh, question. Then what I was thinking about when we we're talking about a language, um, because it's often in Dutch and it's in English. Do you find this complicated? No, no, of course not. No, no, no because uh, I speak both languages and. But I more mean like you, your, if you're thinking about your career, like how does uh, your New York gallery reacts uh, to Dutch texts or do you decide to have the Dutch text in Holland? Yeah, 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 mostly, yeah, because sometimes I have Dutch texts. Uh, I have uh, American friends who bought uh, drawings of me that have Dutch text in it, like Opa and Oma. And uh, yeah, and I said, but do you get it? What it said? Yeah, 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 we understand it. So, yeah, yeah. but uh, no, but of course, uh, yeah, the difficulty is that uh, that English is not my mother language, so I cannot uh, fully uh, understand uh, what I do in, in the language. Like in Dutch, I have a much better uh, sense of what I am uh, expressing if I'm uh, using language. And, um, and in English, this is, I'm a bit limited. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. So um, I usually have no problems with it. Yeah, now I must say I have a paper in which I'm gathering all kind of uh, slang. Uh, for yeah, I I didn't make an artwork with it yet, but I'm making I'm making notes on the word all all variations of the word nothing. And like uh, you have words like diddly squat and gobbledygook, and those are English words. And uh, yeah. yeah, this is, uh, I have to really work on that to get there. Uh, if I look at a movie, I think, ah, that's a nice word for nothing. Uh, then, uh, and I write it down. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, we'll see if I do something with it. But 
Yeah, so this is, this is uh, but sometimes if I can make something in Dutch, I'm very happy because I think, ah, oh, finally, like now in Belgium, I can do mm. what much now better. Uh, yeah, that uh, I think uh, I think it's really nice to finally do something in Dutch and in public space. But then if I show it to my Italian gallerist, she doesn't get what it says. Mm. So that's a little sad. But, but then you won't translate it to Italian. As a yeah, I have another one that's in English. It says get yeah. better soon. And mm. uh, then I, I, I sent that one as well. So that's, yeah. Yeah. But then the, the excitement of the, yeah, because the text really goes to your belly. Yeah, mm. you, because you, if you see it, you think, ah, no, but that's you in a different language, you will, it will not come across. But then, uh, yeah, if I do the, the English things, then, uh, yeah, then it's for Dutch people, it works also a little bit less, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are very used to the English, but yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, so I, I uh, yeah, so now I'm reading my notes from 91, and that is English, Dutch, English, Dutch. <laughs> and now we are trying to translate the Dutch into English. It's terrible. Yeah. For this book, yeah, so that's. Uh, and the writing will be in, uh, in English, I guess. Yeah, it will be in English, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm, when... sorry, I'm sorry, I cannot answer Naomi's, Naomi's question. <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't get what you meant with. Yeah, I think, but maybe it's because it's already ten. I think it's also maybe a, a moment to. Uh, yeah, maybe we should uh, quit. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, uh, they, I hope it was okay because I did a lot of the reading from the text. But uh, I think it was really great, and I really look forward to your uh, writings. Uh, and maybe then all the questions will be answered. What if what? Maybe then all the questions will be answered if we have your writings. If you have the writings, yeah, you can yes. do it again. Yeah, that's and true. When will it be published? Yeah, this writings about the drawings is less uh, developed, but I am working on a different book, and that is the book about my how I went to New York. And that is in the making. We are still waiting for the proofreader and then we can start. Uh, yeah, it will take another, I hope it comes out in the fall, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I have all the pictures and, uh, and then because the plan is to make two books. One is about the drawings and the other one is about the biography about the, mm -hmm. those 10 years in New York. But I'll, I still, I'm still going to New York, but not this year. Because it's uh, it's a Corona year, yes. so yeah, I hope to get out of it soon. Indeed, and maybe we see you in uh, Ghent at some point. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I think I'm maybe coming to Kortrijk, and uh, and maybe if I do another lecture, then uh, I'm doing it live uh, in the with the audience. <laughs> Right, Lily. Okay, but thanks to everybody for listening. I could I couldn't see anybody, so it's a yeah. bit strange. But uh, yeah. But thank you and uh, yeah, good luck in Kortrijk and elsewhere and with the book. And uh, I think it was really uh, like what I said earlier. It was really a big pleasure having you here, although it was online. Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to meet you in uh, person. Thank you, uh, Lily. Okay. Thank night. you, Gola. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.